Saturday today. It's really cloudy, but also somehow really sunny. Today is going to be about art. I'm going to film my mate Louis at his studio. I left my bike at Jack's house though, so that's the first stop. As if that is Louis' studio. There he is. Obviously late again. Louis is late for everything. Hello, Jasmine. Oh, I fucking hate going up that hill. It's because you ride a really stupid bike. Yeah, but it's so much fun. You just so want to can't believe that this is your studio. Mate, it's a joke, huh? I first met Louis about four years ago, I think, when I first moved to London, and I was just super intrigued by his work. He has such an original style of painting animals, and it's amazing to see how much he's developed his artwork in that time. The last year, I was lucky enough to work on a project with him for nine weeks in America, and it was really interesting, like, hearing his whole life story about how his passion as an environmentalist has crossed over into his passion as an artist. This is kind of an exciting episode for me to be making, because I feel like since spending that time with Louis, a lot of the key principles that he lives his life by, I've really adopted into my own life. And hopefully after hearing his story, you guys will feel inspired too. My work explores through um, acrylics. <laughs> now that I know I'm saying it, I can't fucking help but notice it. This could be like an outro to your YouTube. Louis, like, trying to kill his arms. Um... <laughs> Right, shh, they're pan. I wouldn't say so much that by doing a degree, I learned a passion for art. I think that, or even really any particular skills that I practice now, I think that by doing a degree for four years, because you do the foundation first, what actually that did was it gave me an opportunity to spend an intense amount of time in a studio um, and work hard because I wanted to, because I became addicted to that process of working with a paintbrush and painting something. I think that there's not enough passion in people. There's not enough, and I think that that passion has been dumbed down because it's very hard to control a civilization that has too much passion because as soon as you acquire passion you realize that things aren't right and it's very easy to constrain and govern people that are depressed and are dumbed down and are unpassionate about something and so if I use myself as an example of that I'm not answering to anyone. I do what I want to do. And my passion allows me to have that power. And yes, okay, I still deal in money. And yes, I still speak a language that was provided to me. And I still use numbers and these other conformed things that are provided for us by our ancestors. But that doesn't necessarily mean to say that I'm using it in the same way as everyone else around me. I've figured out new approaches to the way in which to live life that works best for me. And that only comes through passion. When I first moved up to London, I had to survive. And so therefore I would be hunting for briefs or hunting for dead end pay to like do something to make the next thing. But by investing my determination and passion into what I love and what I really want to do, which is paint about an endangered species, I don't do that anymore. I'm booked up in my calendar all the way to October. And it's not doing things I don't love doing. I'm traveling, I'm painting, um, I'm doing shows. It's just endless, like, where this can take me. I am free from 
certain constraints that other people may have. I don't have a 9 to 5 job. Well, it's 9 to 5 which never actually starts at 9 and finishes at 5, especially in the city. But I'm free to wake when I please and sleep when I please and to work the days I want. Ironically, I'm the one that usually is working longer and harder hours than everyone else. But then that goes back to what I was saying earlier in the sense that I'm living life exactly how I choose to because I love it. And so, for, you know, like, if you have, if you can find your passion and you can imagine it as a little seed, make sure that the earth that you provide that seed is beautiful earth and make sure that you water it every day and make sure that you watch it grow and make sure that you pinch the leaves out when they need to be pinched and you nurture that little flower that comes because that flower will turn into fruit and you will be able to eat that fruit and so long as you save the seed from that fruit you'll grow the next year's crop and that metaphor can be carried across into your own way of everything and if you do that nothing can ever defeat you because it'll always be there for you. Hey, your studio is sick, by the way. It is all right, isn't it? I like all the artwork. Can I have one? Yeah, you can have one. Thanks for letting me interview you. I You're appreciate welcome. it always. Can you give me three words of advice for anybody that wants to be a artist? Or is it an artist? It's an artist. Yeah. Three words. Passion, defiance, and courage. Nice. I'm feeling good about that. Yeah. You got a few of those things. Safe, man. You know what I'm saying, yeah? <laughs> Magic. <Yeah. laughs> the most awkward handshake ever. Oh, we're not paying rock, stones, and paper. Come. Sit. You're so sandy. Come. Good girl. You going to say goodbye to the mills? Yeah. Bye bye. Oh, bye. Bye bye. Oh, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yes, awesome to see Louis. Thank you very much for letting me interview you. Hope you guys liked it. Sick studio as well, you've done well there. Right now though, I'm heading back to my studio. Okay, back in the studio. That was really awesome to hang out with Louis. He is such a sick guy. I hope he inspired you because he constantly inspires me. Like, he works harder than anyone I think I've ever met that I'm aware of anyway. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, he's found something that he's so passionate about that he will literally put his entire life into it. And it's for a great cause. Like, all of the work that he does is all to raise awareness for these endangered animals that are going to become extinct soon unless us, the human race, do something about it. So please definitely go check out his work. It's so good and there's such a good message behind it. So this week's been hard. I think this is day eight or day seven. But I feel like I've completely been consumed by like trying to commit myself to making a video every day. And it's been real hard and I've pretty much neglected everything else and my to-do list has gone from like this big to like this big. So now I'm gonna have to focus on that for a while. It's been fun though and I'm definitely gonna carry on. I'm just trying to work out a way that I can like structure it a bit differently and bring in a few more elements of like documentaries into it. Cause that's what I'm really passionate about is making documentaries. But then it's like, how can I make that with a bit of YouTube on the side? But yeah, like thinking about it is one thing, but then just doing it is like where it actually works. So that's the next bit, doing it. But yeah, I'm gonna crack on with this to-do list now. So see you in the next video. I don't know when it's gonna be, maybe tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow, a couple more days. Need to find some cool stuff to film. But yeah, just stick around and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, there goes my rib. Oh, fuck, my ribs actually pulled out. I broke my rib when I was a kid and sometimes it pops out when I laugh. Don't have too much fun. Yeah, that's why I'm dead serious.